lots of problems like this don't succumb until they're surrounded by other problems. So people have said, What's a, what are similar problems that we could play with that would be like this? Maybe we'd get some information. For instance, why 3n plus 1? Why not 3n minus 1? Brady, let's try a 3n minus 1. Well, let's do it with 7. Let's try 7 again. Okay. So we're going to change our idea. We're going to instead go from when it's, when it's even again. We're going to divide by 2, just as before, but when it's odd, we're going to make a tiny change. Instead of going from n to 3n plus 1, we're going to go to 3n minus 1. Big deal. Must be the same kind of thing. Well, let's try 7 again. Why not? 7, 3n minus 1, that's 20. That's even. Goes down to 10, goes down to 5. 3n minus 1, that's 14. Whoops, goes down to 7. It will never get to 1. Never. So we solved that problem. We now know the answer. We did 3n minus 1. Maybe they're all easy except 3n plus 1. So one of the weird things people have done, or beautiful things really, is to say, well, let's think of any rule like this. Let's think of a n plus b. And maybe we could have a machine that would tell us you give me A and B, and I'll tell you, says the machine, whether it'll end or not. And people have proved that that's an undecidable problem. That's as hard as the halting problem in computer science, which your readers probably know about, your listeners. So that's undecidable. So people have explored this in various ways, looking for ways to connect it to a, a, a deeper mathematical fabric after which you might get a hint as to how to solve it. But nobody has succeeded. Professor, I can imagine there are lots of problems that are simple to conceive and difficult to solve. Why is the Collatz conjecture, why is this one so famous? Why has this one captured the imagination? Is it because famous people tried it? or Certainly famous people noticed it and got interested in it. There's another phenomenon here, which is the advent of the personal computer. And 1970 is when this began to get popular, and people were just having access to computers that could do this really fast and do a lot more than you can do by hand. Before then, it was a kind of curiosity. People knew some examples. Kolatz himself, I believe the date is 1937, when he claims to have first put this forward, though there's some controversy over who really did it first. My own feeling is that something that's simple and and cute as this, must have been discovered many times by many people, different places. Some of the big famous problems in mathematics that we know the name of have prizes attached to them. Million dollars, all, the, all these things we hear about. This yes. one doesn't have a big prize attached it to it. It has a little prize, but from someone whom you would like to win a prize from, I would anyway. Uh, Erdős offered $500 for this prize, although in other places he says, you know, it's completely hopeless. So. Why only $500? I don't know. He was being conservative that day. Why, why does this one not have a Millennium Prize? If so many big mathematicians find it interesting and it's so hard, why doesn't this have a million dollars attached to it? It's a good question. The Millennium Prizes and the things which are famous like the Riemann hypothesis or the problem of fluid flow, those are problems that are deeply connected with many other areas of mathematics. The, one of the things that makes the Collatz problem hard is that it's a kind of isolated peak. You see it in the distance. Well, there are people who really want to go up and climb that mountain if they see it in the distance. And other people who say, well, you know, there's a lake nearby, there's a, a nice hill over here, there's some green grass. Why don't I just play in this area? And I'll, I'll learn more and I'll do more that's interesting. Shouldn't we be encouraging mathematicians to go for the isolated peak, though, because of all the things they'll invent to get up there? Well. Yes, that's a good thing to do if there are things to invent. So far, people have tried a lot of techniques on Collatz, but I, I don't know that it's led to that much new mathematics. The, um, the Fermat problem is a real classic. That was solved really only when it suddenly became connected to deep mathematics. And there was an early period where it was connected to the development of basic algebraic number theory through the 19th century. Fantastic developments came out of it. Then there was a kind of dry period, I think, when not much really fundamental came out of it. Then suddenly it became, through the work of, of uh, Fry, I guess, 
connected with the theory of elliptic curves, and then Ribbit did stuff, and then Weil saw that he could really get somewhere. So it was when it, it kind of got engaged, when the gears began to mesh, that it was really became a hot item and was solved. And that's when it became important. So if the Collette's conjecture is proven, yeah. it is possible the person who does it will win prizes and money. It just depends oh, how yeah. they do it. I think that's right. I think that's right. Though it's so famous now, I think they'll be celebrated whether or not they get big, big money from it. The big money chases um, prizes slightly randomly, I'm afraid. I don't know that it really inspires much mathematical work, but it does make good publicity. In our paper, uh, Riemann uh, did precisely that. He explained how to extend the, this function to all possible values, except for one. So there's only one value where there's nothing you can do, that somehow it will be antified.